Now, class, who could tell me what descriptive writing is? asked Mr. Bills, pacing slowly in front of the classroom. Eddie then raised his hand. Yes, Eddie? It's describing something, Eddie replied knowingly. As Mr. Bills nodded in approval, Eddie high-fived Teddy in triumph. Today, we will be writing our own descriptive passages, Mr. Bills continued. You are required to write a page about a sunny field, he said. Mr. Bills then began listing all the information that would be needed for the task. Sarah tapped her pen against her desk impatiently. Across the room, she could see Kim gesturing to her with waving arms. Not understanding, Sarah then shook her head and turned away from her. For the rest of the lesson, everyone was writing their page of descriptive writing. All except Kim, that is. She was forever trying to attract Sarah's attention. After about a half an hour, school ended and all the students were packing their bags. Remember, class, Mr. Bill said. The summer dance is tomorrow night, and I expect all of you to be there, he said. Sarah and Kim then grinned at each other from across the room. This was the first time that the school was hosting a dance, and all the students couldn't wait. After their bags were packed and their classroom was tidied up, Kim then dragged Sarah outside. She began making angry and sad expressions. Calm down, Kim! exclaimed Sarah. What is it? Didn't you hear? Kim said furiously. That detective school has rejected our entries that we sent them last week, she said. What? shrieked Sarah, looking for something to kick. The group of boys talking beside them silently stepped away. Why would they reject us? she said. Apparently, we're immature, soaked Kim. I mean, I know I laughed at that sad movie once, but seriously, she said. She then sighed and glared at the ground. At least nothing can ruin the summer dance for us. It's going to be so much fun, she said. Especially slapping boys that ask you to dance, added Sarah. The next day was filled with last-minute accessory shopping and helping set up the decorations for the dance. By 8 o'clock that night, the field had been transformed. A DJ stand was set up with four loudspeakers and very colorful LED spotlights shining up into the sky. Students had began to arrive. The girls were wearing dresses of various lengths and colors, and all the boys, except for a few, were wearing collared shirts as required. Sarah and Kim joined the crowd. Sarah was wearing a blood-red velvet dress with a matching choker. The dress flowed around her ankles like mist as she walked and her stiletto heels tapping with every step. Kim, on the other hand, was wearing a silk dress of various colors. At her shoulders, it was deep blue, slowly melting into purple, red, orange, and gold. She was wearing a silver necklace around her neck with an onyx stone and wore sparkly black heels. At 8.15, the music started. Teddy was running the DJ booth, messing around with various buttons. At one point, to Sally's delight, the speakers were making a meowing noise like a cat would do. Up until 10 o'clock, the music was playing and the students were dancing and eating at the buffet. Everyone was completely ignoring the four teachers that stood in the corner. A small stage had been set up at the back of the field next to the DJ stand. The music slowly faded as Mr. Samuels ascended the steps to the stage. Welcome, high schoolers, to the very first Brooklyn High Summer Dance, exclaimed Mr. Samuels. Several students applauded while some were too busy whispering. Mr. Samuels then continued speaking. The dance, as you know, will last until midnight, but that doesn't mean you have to leave a shoe like Cinderella girls, he said laughingly. Anyway, to make you all feel welcome, 
Sally has prepared some jokes for her, um, future comedian career, he said uncertainly. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the night, he said. As Mr. Samuels left the stage, Sally skipped up the steps two at a time. She wore a knee-length black gossamer dress with sequins and black ballet shoes. Her glasses were glittering in the bright light, the frames covered in glitter. Welcome to the summer dance, she squealed happily. Now, time for the jokes. So, what do fish use as money? She asked. No one said anything. Currency! Do you get it? Again, no one said anything, or even laughed at that joke. One student slowly clapped. Um, okay then, she said. We were studying under mass in geography today. It was nice. Grinning, she looked around. Nice! Like the rock under mass is made of? No, she said. Some students looked at her like she was absolutely crazy. My comedian career is ruined, she wailed, running off the stage. Sarah winced and continued talking to Indigo. The music had started again, and she could hear a sharp noise behind her. Judging from Kim's grin, as she walked towards them, she had slapped someone. One down, one less than all the boys to go, Kim said smugly. Sarah had been correct. Then, all three of them started laughing until an ear-piercing shriek was heard. A crowd had gathered at the side of the building by the bike parks. Sarah and Kim ran as fast as they could in their high heels to get to the crowd. Some of the students were murmuring, Others were paralyzed in shock. The two girls then shoved their way into the front. The teachers were trying to get them all away. The sight was absolutely awful. Eddie was lying on the stones with a knife wound in his chest and a pool of blood around him. Sarah then turned to Kim. Are you ready to go detective mode, assistant? She said. You got it, Detective Sarah, Kim replied. It took a while, but eventually all the teachers ushered the students into the classrooms and left Sarah and Kim to do their work. Only Mr. Samuel stayed with them to watch them solve the case. When he wasn't looking, Kim began dancing on the spot, almost grinning. Why the happy face? demanded Sarah curiously. Immediately, Kim stopped dancing. Because we get to solve a real mystery, she said and no more annoyance. Is that even a word? asked Sarah. Kim just shrugged. They then began putting on their latex gloves. Sarah checked Eddie's wrist for a pulse but found nothing. While she was doing this, Kim examined the stab wound. This happened approximately an hour ago, Kim said, and from the angle of the wound, it was someone left-handed. How do you know they didn't just use their left hand when they were actually right-handed? Asked Mr. Samuels, who was peering over their shoulders. The wound would have been more... Kim then hesitated, searching for the right words. More sloppy. This is a clean wound, she said. As Kim was talking, Sarah jotted down some notes in a small notebook that she had. She then frowned. The security was upgraded last month, right? She asked. Mr. Samuels then nodded. Then how did the killer enter the school? She asked. A fault? Suggested Kim. No, it's top quality, replied Mr. Samuels. I'll send Mr. Bills to go check out the perimeter nonetheless, he said. He then walked toward room 209. Mr. Samuels is right. Sarah said in awe. Kim then waited. The killer couldn't have broken in. Somebody in the school is the killer, she said. What? said Kim. Who do you think it is? I don't know, but I guess it's time for questioning the suspects. We have surveillance cameras here and another one here, Sarah said, pointing out the two cameras. 
If the murder happened about an hour ago, then we will have to rewind them and see who was where and limit our suspects to a few, she said. Kim then nodded and continued to examine the victim while Sarah went to the surveillance room. Mr. Samuels had finally stopped talking to Mr. Bills and went with her. The surveillance room had 20 screens in it, each one showing a different place in the school. Mr. Samuels rewound the cameras about an hour to about half past nine. The screen showed various angles of the dance. Sarah then scanned the screens. She could see her and Kim talking, students dancing, but couldn't see Eddie in any of the screens. There was no camera pointing toward where the body was found, so they couldn't say directly who it was. She flicked the camera to half an hour back. There was Eddie, talking with five students. Sarah flipped her notebook open and began writing five names down. Teddy, Penny, William, Sally, and Sydney. They were the last students to be seen with them. Without warning, the camera shut down. After a few seconds, they lit up again, showing present time. Upon trying to rewind them once again, the word error appeared on the screen. All past data had been erased. Darn it! exclaimed Sarah furiously. At least you have those five names, said Mr. Samuels hopefully. Sarah then nodded and looked to the camera once again. She could see Kim walking from the side of the school. She was scribbling in her notebook and walking slowly in circles. Sarah decided to leave her to it and collect her suspects. She entered room 209, where all the students were, and asked for Teddy, Penny, William, Sally, and Sydney. They all hesitantly stood up and walked toward the door. Now, said Sarah, to do this properly, I will have to question each one of you one by one, she said. She then led them into room 208 and gestured for them to sit down. You five were the last students to be seen with Eddie approximately an hour and a half ago when the murder occurred. The cameras somehow erased the evidence, so the five of you are my only suspects so far, she said. All five students then groaned. Teddy, come with me to room 211. The rest of you, she said, eyeing them all. Stay here. She walked out of the room, and Teddy followed. Sarah was pacing in front of the room, in front of the desk that Teddy was sitting at. Mr. Keith stood in the back of the room, while Mr. Samuels had gone to check on Kim. Teddy, what were you and the other four talking about with Eddie at nine o'clock? asked Sarah, who was checking her nails. Well, um, we were just talking, shrugged Teddy. Do you have any actual proof that it was us? The killer couldn't have lured him afterwards. Check the camera, he said. One, said Sarah. It was in a blind spot. And two, I asked the questions here, she said. He then opened his mouth to retort with an answer, but Sarah quickly cut him off. What were you talking about, Teddy? She said. School, replied Teddy. Sally was talking about her cats and all the tricks that she's been teaching them. I guess the rest of us were discussing making a study group or something, he said. Sarah then stopped pacing and turned to face him. So, she said slowly, you all wanted to meet together to study, she said. He then nodded. Or were you all working together? This could all be a trick. And you all committed the murder, she said. Teddy then looked outraged. Sarah, you think too much. Why would we kill him? He asked. A long-held grudge, maybe? Suggested Sarah, writing down some more notes. Teddy then shook his head disbelievingly. Oh, I get it, he said laughingly. This is all a joke. I bet Eddie will be barging in here laughing any minute now he said. Sarah did not laugh, nor did she smile. I've heard enough. 
That was all she said, before leading him out of the room. Penny watched Sarah pace the room. What were you doing with the others at nine o'clock? asked Sarah. Um, well, um, said Penny, a finger on her chin. We, um, the five of us, were talking about, um, a chat group on Hangouts, she said. Wait, said Sarah. You were talking about a study group on Hangouts, not meeting in person? She asked. Penny then nodded, and Sarah noted this down. We all talked about Sally's cats, and she showed us some pictures of them standing on their hind legs. She even showed us a video of it putting on a tutu, grinned Penny. Anyway, we were all talking about murder mystery books and horrors, uh, something like that, she said. Sarah's eyes then narrowed. Who, pray tell, started this subject, she asked. I don't know, shrugged Penny, her face crumbling in concentration. We just started talking about books. Sally mentioned horror and murder. Then we all agreed that we liked murder mysteries, she said. Thank you for your cooperation, said Sarah. Sarah rubbed her aching eyes. How long could she stay awake? She didn't know, but she had to try. William, what were you talking about at nine o'clock with the others? She asked. The repetitive questions were beginning to become irritating. William then shrugged. Books, he said simply. Sarah then rolled her eyes and made a motion with her hand to ask for more information. Hangouts too, I guess. We were talking about, uh, about how Eddie was making funny comments and trying to prove our theories about our homework wrong, he said. Eddie? asked Sarah, jotting this down. What was he saying? She asked. Um, something about how the answer to one of the questions, I forgot which, is impossible to answer or something. Then he started typing a bunch of emojis. We were arguing about that for a while, he said. After writing this down, she thanked him and left the room, leading him back. Sally pinched herself as her head dropped. Sorry, she muttered through her yawn. Sarah then shrugged. What were you talking about at nine o'clock with the others? She said. Sally then frowned. Well, I was showing my cat videos and the five of us were talking about, about hangouts, she said. Show me this video, said Sarah. Sally then pulled out her phone and pressed play. A white, brown, and black cat was standing in front of what looked like a small pink skirt. Sarah could hear Sally's voice in the video, encouraging the cat. The cat then meowed and shuffled into the skirt. It then stood on its hind legs. The video then ended. Sarah then nodded and asked, What were you all talking about on Hangouts? Sally then shrugged. I don't know. I'm not allowed to, but the others were talking about Eddie and emojis, I think. Sorry, I really can't concentrate, frowned Sally. Sighing, Sarah noted this down as well and led Sally out of the room. Sydney looked at Sarah and waited for the first question. Okay, what were you talking about at nine o'clock? Sarah asked, doodling in her notebook. Talking? You're going to ask me about that? asked Sydney. Sarah then nodded. Sally's cats, hangouts, books, stuff like that, shrugged Sydney. When Sarah asked her for more details, Sydney then scowled. How am I meant to remember every detail? she said. Okay, listen up, snapped Sarah. Eddie just got murdered, and you five are the only lead so far, so... You are going to have to think back and remember, she said. Sydney then stared at her with wide eyes. Gosh, okay then. Sally was showing us a video about her cat. Um, we were talking about how on Hangouts last night, Eddie was going crazy with emojis and, and books, I think. 
We were talking about our favorite genres. Are you happy now? She asked. Sarah then rolled her eyes and noted everything down. She then led Sydney out of the room. This was going to be a very long night. Mr. Keith had left to go to room 209. Sarah, on the other hand, dropped Sydney off at room 208. Mr. Bills had obviously finished searching the perimeter and was watching the students. After this, she walked to the side of the school warily and began talking to Kim. Please tell me you found something, said Sarah. Congratulations, Sarah. I'm going to be positive, replied Kim, gesturing for her to come and take a look. Firstly, we now know the blade was approximately 15 centimeters, or at least that's how deep the wound is. Also, look here. Kim then lifted Eddie's right hand. Hidden under it was what looked like words. It was written in blood. He wrote this? asked Sarah. No, said Kim slowly. His hand would have blood on it, right? The killer wrote it, she said. What does it say? asked Sarah, trying to see what the word said. It's a message, Kim replied. Be careful what you wish for, Kim recited. Sarah then rocked on her heels. What could this mean? Well, have we wished for anything yet, Kim? I don't know. Oh, no, she said. What is it? asked Mr. Samuels. Just think about it, said Kim. Just recently, we were complaining about being rejected by that detective school, she said. So, the killer knows about that? asked Sarah. Kim then sighed. So it seems. Either way, said Mr. Samuels, you two have to solve this he said. The two girls both nodded. Oh, and one last thing, added Kim. Mr. Samuels told me about the camera's error. I can fix that in a short time, she said. A short time? asked Sarah. Yep, you might only get to download several frames though, so choose wisely, she said. With several clicks of a button, Kim found a way of restoring the footage. They could only restore so much of the evidence. Okay, so I did write down some times, said Sarah, flicking to when the five suspects were talking. She also restored the beginning of the dance and when the body was found. After she saved them to a USB port, the computer shut down. Upon trying to restart it, they realized that the computer's life had come to an end. The three photos were all that they needed, according to Sarah, so they began examining them. They were in order of the times that they occurred. The first was of the beginning of the dance, when the students were beginning to arrive. Teddy was up on the DJ stand, and the rest of the suspects were getting food from the buffet. The second was of the five talking. Everyone else was either at the buffet or in the center of the field. Hey, wait a second, said Sarah. Why isn't Teddy at the DJ stand? She asked. I don't know, replied Kim, noting this down. The third and final photo was of the students crowding by the side of the school. They could see themselves pushing to the front of the crowd. After printing the frames, they all went to room 208. The five students were still sitting at the table. Everyone except Sally who had fallen asleep from apparent boredom. Sarah then grabbed a heavy encyclopedia and slammed it on the table, making her wake up with a jerk. What the? She exclaimed, making the others laugh. Sarah cleared her thought. So, she started, reading her notes. We have looked over what you all said. There's only one thing that's different in each account. Everyone except Teddy was talking about hangouts. Teddy, on the other hand, was saying something about meeting together in person, she said. Yeah, that was a few weeks ago, interrupted Teddy. We also were talking about how a few weeks ago we planned to make a group where we all meet together in person, he said. Why would you make one, 
asked Sarah. Because I can't go on hangouts, said Sally. We were also talking about that. Penny then nodded. Ted was just getting confused, she shrugged. Sarah jotted this down as well. Well, we went over some of the recovered frames from the footage, she said, shuffling through the pictures, and we found that you, Teddy, weren't at the DJ stand. Why? she asked. Teddy then shrugged. Adeline wanted to turn, he said. Kim, said Sarah, bring Adeline in here. Let's see if this is true. A few seconds later, Kim had returned with a very confused-looking Adeline. Have a seat, Adeline, said Sarah. Now, Teddy here says that that you wanted to turn as DJ. Is that true? She asked. Yeah, I wanted to see what songs I could play. I don't like his taste, you know, she said simply. Sarah then nodded and let her leave. She then stared at the three photos. It was only you five? She asked. They all nodded, and Sarah left the room. There was a scream. Kim and Sarah were instantly there. Sally was standing in the doorway of the girl's bathroom, her hand covering her mouth. What's going on here? demanded Sarah. Kim was running forward to see what had caused Sally to scream. She glanced at Sarah, alarm on her face. Tell me, she said to Sally quietly. Mr. Bills let me out to go to the bathroom, and I found her like this, she sobbed. And sure enough, Adeline was lying on the bathroom floor. Her throat was slit, and judging from the mess, she had put up quite a fight. Get back to room 208, said Kim faintly, putting on a fresh pair of latex gloves. Sally then nodded faintly and absently walked to the room with her hands shaking wildly. Sarah watched until she entered. The two girls worked in silence, gathering what information they could from the victim. Well, sighed Kim, reading over her notes. We don't have a blood tester, so we can't see if the same knife was used, she said. It doesn't matter, replied Sarah. It would have been clean to avoid a blood trail, she said. Kim then agreed. Pity the camera system is fried. We could have seen who killed her, she said. Hey, Sarah, exclaimed Kim. Go talk to the teachers and see who was let out for a bathroom break, she said. She then nodded and immediately ran to the classroom. Upon questioning, all five students and Adeline had been let out. Useless, Sarah hissed in frustration. This is getting them nowhere. Sarah, called Kim. Sarah then ran back to the bathroom. Look, another message. It's a clue, she said. The killer wrote this? Asked Sarah, receiving a nod. In what looks like... She then peered down at the black substance. Nail polish, she said. It seems so, muttered Kim. She then snorted. I guess we can exclude the boys then she said. Sarah then shrugged and read the writing aloud. They await their prey. What the heck does that mean? She asked. Kim then sighed. To be honest, I don't know. And Sarah, this was also found, she said. Passing Sarah a picture, it was of a white tiger. They made their way back to room 208, warily glancing around. When they arrived, not even Sally was asleep. All right, people, Sarah said sweetly, Kim glancing at her in horror. Sarah then batted her eyelashes and said, What, pray tell, does they wait for their prey mean to any one of you? She asked. All five students shrugged and shook their heads in confusion. Also, said Sarah, with a quiet voice, Sally, didn't you mention something about wanting inspiration for this new story you were going to write? She asked. Sally looked horrified. Yeah, but in this story, 
Kids get trapped in an abandoned theme park, she answered. Kim then frowned. I thought it was a murder mystery, she asked. Well, this dude does come with a chainsaw, but no, she answered. Kim then said to Mr. Bills, The school is on lockdown. Do not let anyone enter or exit except teachers, she said. They told this to the other teachers, too, and sat on the wooden steps outside. Okay, so our suspect is left-handed and is using a knife, muttered Sarah to Kim. She nodded, then frowned. But William is the only suspect that's left-handed, she said in frustration. And there's absolutely no evidence leading to him, she said. They both then put their heads in their hands and groaned. This was an impossible case. An hour later, the two girls compared notes. They had been studying the suspects' personal lives through social media, on electronics, and questioning their siblings. Okay, I can't find anything amiss with their profiles, sighed Sarah. Just the normal teenager posts. Same here, said Kim, sorting through her notes. I've just finished questioning their siblings. They then frowned at each other. In front of them, a striped tabby cat ran across the grass. Sarah blinked in realization. Um, Kim, she said quietly, I think we're out of luck. We have to leave this to the professionals, she said. Kim then sighed. You're right. This isn't one of those cheesy murder mysteries where the investigator always solves the case, she said. From behind them, they could hear a door close. Turning their heads, they saw a horrified-looking Sally. You two can't give up, she wailed. You're our only hope. Besides, the fun is just beginning, she said. Yeah, sorry, Sals, but... started Sarah. Wait a second interrupted Kim. Did you say the fun is just beginning? Giggling, Sally pointed to the classroom window. From within the classroom, someone had put their hand against the glass before collapsing. A bloody handprint was left behind, staining the glass crimson. Slowly rising to their feet, the girls could see that all the students were slumped over at their desks, blood dripping from their necks. Sighing, Sally pouted, and I thought you would have solved this case before you ran out of time. Well, tick-tock, girls, it's midnight and the dance is over, she said. Slowly, she walked toward the two girls, a knife in her hand. They backed away, step by step, only postponing the inevitable. Without warning, Sally pounced in. Hold on a minute, called Kim. Don't interrupt my story, said Sally. Yeah, whatever. Why do I have to die? I mean, it's okay that Sarah dies, but me? Sarah protested from behind her. The ninth grade students were crowded in the common room. It was Friday afternoon, the day before the dance. Um, because the killer has to kill, replied Sally, almost offensively. Besides, I'm the killer. You wouldn't kill me, though, would you, Sal's? asked Eddie. Yeah, Sally's too nice to kill anyone, stated Kim confidently. But me, on the other hand? Can you guys please stop telling scary stories? asked Indigo. You're going to ruin the night of the dance. Sarah then grinned. What I want to know is how me, of all people, was rejected from a detective school. I mean, seriously, look at me. I scream, detective. Guys, called Charlotte. Mr. Bills wants these books already. Come on, stop telling stories. That afternoon, when everyone was packing up, Mr. Bills reminded them of the dance. Remember, class, called Mr. Bills. The summer dance is tomorrow night, and I expect all of you to be there, he said. Why does this sound familiar? asked Sarah, leading Kim outside. Psst, Sally must have asked Mr. Bills to say that so it would match her story. 
Don't worry about it. It's not like there's a psychotic side to Sally, Kim said. Huh, said Sarah. I just find it funny that Sally knew all the details, like our dresses and what's going to happen, she said. She then decided to shake her head and ignore it. At the dance the next night, they had completely forgotten about the story. Everyone enjoyed themselves, and no murders had occurred. Congrats, Kim. You were right, said Sarah. About what? Kim replied. That Sally planned everything to match her story. That girl's a teddy bear. She wouldn't hurt a fly, Sarah said. From the edge of the crowd, they heard a scream. Groaning, they ran over to the side of the school. Just like in the story, Eddie was lying on the rocks in a pool of blood. Beside him, on the cream-colored wall, were the words, or would I? Why can't we just get a break? groaned Sarah. Sarah.